Welcome to the webinar on the National Health Council Patient Engagement Fair Market Value Calculator Toolbox. I want to begin briefly by just talking a little bit about the National Health Council. We are a member organization, and the largest group that we have in membership are patient advocacy organizations. As you can see here on the screen, we have over 60 of them in membership, and they include many of the largest organizations in the country, as well as a wide range of medium to small organizations, especially those that are covering rare diseases. I also want to just take a minute to acknowledge our sponsors. We're very uh, grateful for their generosity and they made this possible. Just quickly through our agenda, we're going to talk a little bit about the background and how this FMV calculator came about. High level introduction to the methodology used, uh, then an introduction to the actual patient engagement compensation toolbox, which includes the calculator, but also other tools. And then we're going to do a case example and talk about some next steps for the calculator and this project. I'll begin with the background. So why create an FMV calculator? Well, there were many questions about the right and appropriate way to compensate patients. Companies did not want to be accused of in any way abusing patients for not compensating them um, enough or for overcompensating them and being accused of potentially trying to coerce them. Um, patient advocacy organizations want to be engaged with companies and um, they know that companies knock on their door and ask them to participate in activities all the time, but they didn't know how much to charge them for, their, for, for the uh, hours and skills that they have, that they were contributing. Um, so we were asked by both patient groups and industry to come up with a way for coming up with a calculator that would be specific to patients. Uh, there was recognition that the methods and the inputs for determining rates for clinicians and researchers and healthcare providers were not applicable to patients. I want to recognize that this is a transatlantic uh, collaboration. And so we worked uh, closely with both PFMD and WECAM in Europe to align the work that we're doing so that work that they have produced, we're taking advantage of and leveraging as much as possible. And the work that we produce is being leveraged uh, across the Atlantic by these, other, by these organizations. So let me jump into methodology. Um, what do we need to do, to do to develop the FMV calculator? We needed market, comp market compensation data for similar skill sets that would be incorporated into the calculator. We needed to define the breadth of activities that would be captured by the calculator. We needed to compare and rec reconcile US compensation rates, marketing rates, and data collected from NHC member organizations to figure out what the right rates are. We needed guidance from a multi-stakeholder steering committee and a review committee that helped us with this process. We needed to ensure that the calculator was going to be easy to use and that there wasn't going to be expensive or proprietary software required in order to use it. And we also used that input coming from our colleagues in Europe for, through PFMD and WECAN and other partner projects so that we wouldn't be reinventing the wheel and we'd be sharing information and creating alignment in North America and Europe. One example of how we, we worked to get this right was taking information and uh, work products, deliverables that came from organizations like We Can, Patient Focused Medicines Development, and FPA, um, taking all of the information that they've been working on and the projects that they've been working on over the last few years that could feed into this project. And as we create our tools and deliverables, those will feed into the work that's going on in Europe. So um, a, a very um, uh, collaborative and aligned process. So what are the methods that we use for estimating the FMV hourly rates for patients? Well, we believe that the rates, the rates should reflect the activities that patients are engaged in and the experience and skills needed to perform those activities. But we wanted to be sure that we excluded activities that might influence the purchase of the engaging party's products. So for example, uh, that these weren't going to be, this wasn't going to be used to increase the sale of a particular product. We wanted the market compensation rates to be adjusted, so hourly wage rates would be adjusted to a consulting rate. And we wanted to um, use historical market payment data that was made to patients. Um, in we wanted to consider it, but it wasn't going to be the only thing that we considered because we could not really um, uh, know that we could directly rely upon them as there is no insight into how they were determined. So the process for getting to that hourly rate was looking at the breadth and depth of patient activities. What are those engagement activities? PFMD had conducted a survey. We did our own stakeholder interviews, and we had input from our steering and review committees to come to a final patient activity list. 
To identify that appropriate benchmarking compensation data, we understood that there wasn't a comparable benchmark for patients per se, but there were other activities that go on or other um, experiences and knowledge and skill sets required for certain jobs that are out there. And we zeroed in on the, uh, the compensation rates for those jobs because we thought they were most comparable. We also used National Health Council compensation survey data. This is an annual survey that the National Health Council conducts. It is a survey of patient advocacy organizations and the compensation that they pay their own staff. And we look at different titles and levels throughout each organization to determine uh, rates for those titles and levels. We used that data as a good benchmark for patient engagement activities. To take that hourly rate, wage rate, and turn it into a consulting rate, we um, took the data and we adjusted it to reflect independent consulting services. That would include salary, benefits, overhead, and profit based on market data. And we converted it to an hourly rate by dividing it by the number of hours typically worked in a year, which in the US is 2080, and that's adjusted to exclude holidays and vacation time. And from that, a range of rates is developed. So now let's take a look at what's actually in the compensation toolbox. First, there's a patient engagement activities framework. That's to help the user, it's like a worksheet to help the user determine uh, the, pre the preliminary data and numbers that they're going to want to feed into the calculator. And so it's to have all that information and those numbers at their fingertips, and it helps someone walk through the activity. Then there are the principles for compensation. Um, these are guiding principles for thinking about compensating patients for patient engagement activity. And it's good to read through those principles before you jump into the calculator itself. And then lastly, it is the calculator and some supporting resources that go with the calculator. Um, the patient engagement activities framework, as I said, is really a worksheet. It helps you think about the inputs and the modifiers that you're going to want to enter into the calculator. It includes things like the type of patient participant that you would be looking for, the expertise required for the activity or skill set that would be required for that activity, um, selecting the actual activities themselves, the interaction mode for that activity. Would it be in person or would it be uh, virtual or by telephone? Um, the time commitment required for the activity, whether or not there are travel considerations and, and the other potential modifiers. The principles, again, are guiding principles for thinking about compensating patients. And there are uh, different domains for these guiding principles that are included in this document. Thinking about the patient engagement type, the participant type that you would need to have for your activity, general compensation principles, administrative and logistical principles, time commitment, travel and reimbursement considerations, what, what happens when people decline compensation because patients do have the, uh, the right to be able to decline compensation, and then other considerations. An example is provided here. When we think about reimbursement for travel or other out-of-pocket expenses that might be required for someone to participate in an activity, we consider that as distinct and separate from the actual compensation for their skill set, compensation for their time to provide their skills and their experience and expertise. And we separate what's considered reimbursement for out-of-pocket expenses from compensation for the activity. As I said, the fair market value calculator itself also has some accompanying resources and you're able to access these through the calculator. There is a user guide. There is a, a more in-depth description of the methodology that was used. There's a guide for interpreting results. And there's also a glossary of terms so that you can look up the terms as you encounter them. Now we'll go to a case example. And I wanna walk you through the background on that case example. So here's the scenario. A company recruits an individual patient with a confirmed diagnosis. It wants that person to provide input for some planned focus groups and to co-create documents that would result from the focus groups. The patient needs to have knowledge about their disease, their individual personal experience, but they also need to have some uh, knowledge about the disease population, so going beyond their personal experience. The required amount of time would be two hours for the person to read materials before the co-creation co meeting begins. Then the patient would assist in the co-creation of the materials in a, um, that would be ready for the focus group, and that would take approximately two hours. The patient would actually co-facilitate that focus group, which will take approximately four hours. And then the patient would be involved in co-creation of the final report, which will take another two hours. And at the end of the activity, there will be a debrief after the focus group and the creation of the report that will take another one hour. So right now we're gonna to switch to the actual calculator itself 
and we're going to input the data that would be required for this scenario example so that you can see how the, the calculator works and the information that's produced by the calculator. Now we will take a look at the actual fair market value calculator, which is free for use on our website. On this page, you can go through the user guide, interpreting FMV results document, the glossary of terms, the FMV hourly rate methodology, as well as the terms of service. This calculator does not store all of the summary reports that you have ever made. It only stores the last summary report. So you will have to save your summary as a PDF in order to access it. On the first page here, I will accept the terms of service and begin the FMV calculation. We stated previously that the participant type required was an individual patient. We have this patient as a patient with a condition with a confirmed diagnosis. Here you will see information icons that you can click on and will give you the definition. You can also choose the type of participant type here as well as other modifiers such as does the patient have experience receiving any treatment for this condition. For our scenario, we ask that the patient has knowledge about the condition beyond individual and personal experience. Again, we have the definition here. We can hover over it to make sure that you have the required skill set for your activity. We'll go to the next page here where we have the activity time requirements table. Here you can put in multiple activities if you want the individual patient or patient advocate to participate in both co-creation and something else, as well as other activities such as presentation, testimonial, mock trial participant, interview participant, focus group participant, survey responder, reviewer, pre-activity researcher, advisory board member, roundtable participant, and others. First, we will put in our hours for co-creation. We have the two prep hours to read the materials. Beforehand, we have the actual activity hours, which includes helping create the materials for the focus group, as well as helping with the materials for the final report. The number of events here is one, and we put zero for post activity hours as well as travel time. For the focus group, since they are not a focus group participant, but they are a focus group co-facilitator, I have put those hours in the other category since we do not have a specific one for a focus group co-facilitator. Here we have the number of hours of the focus group as four, and we have a debrief for one hour. This event only occurs one time, so we have a one here. You can put in a brief description of the activities at the bottom of this page. Here we have read materials before the event. The description of the engagement is the co-creator of materials and focus group co-facilitator. And then of course the, there will be a debrief after the focus group. On the next page, we can put other relevant info. Again, this does not change the calculation, but can help you as you view your report. This will be a virtual focus group and the creation of materials will be via web-based activities. Since there's no travel for this particular activity, we'll leave this blank. However, you can put the mileage here as well as incidental expenses and other expenses. For the standard FMV hourly rate that applies to travel time, we have recommended 50%. However, you can set it and adjust it to whichever setting you prefer. These are additional travel requirements. They do not apply in this scenario, but you could put that a caregiver must accompany. Um, perhaps a patient may need an additional one to two days of travel due to their condition, or they may need accompanying medical equipment, rest breaks, and they may travel with a service animal. We also have other as well as special dietary requirements here. Other modifiers that may apply 
and do not change the calculation are risk or liability, such as legal or financial liability, wages lost, size of the patient organization, care support, such as needing child care, elder care, or adult care, and the urgency of the activity. While these do not change the rate of the FMB calculation, they can be used to determine where along the rate scale that you would like to compensate the patient for the activity. I will now generate a summary and I can view the report. So here we see the fair market value hourly rate for an individual patient with a disease, as well as knowledge about the condition beyond their personal experience, working for the set amount of hours, is $880 to $1,650. The FMB hourly rate per hour is 80 to 150. You can view the rest of the report here and you can see the modifiers and specific interactions that you put in here, as well as the type of activities, total estimated travel expenses, um, whether they need rest breaks, and what time you will compensate, what percentage you will compensate travel time. So now you've had an opportunity to see the calculator and how it works. And you have the um, scenario example that we talked about before the demonstration began. Well, the fair market hourly rate came out to be between 80 and $150. And for all of the hours, the total payment would be 880 to 1650 and so how, how would you determine um, how you would choose where you should be in this range? Well, you would use this information with uh, additional information that you would already have in place within your company, the policies and procedures that your company or organization would be using to make these kinds of determinations and to help you focus in on where you would be in this range. To help you in interpreting results, uh, we have a few things that you might want to consider. One of them often is the area of the country that the activity would take place in. If it's a high cost area of the country where wages are high, or if it's a low cost area of the country where wages are lower, that's one of the factors that you would wanna consider in choosing this range. You might also take into consideration uh, the risk or the stress that a person might have um, in participating in this activity, if it's a high stress or low stress activity. You may wanna consider wages lost, for example, if um, the patient has to take a lot of time off from work or uh, salary or hourly wage that might be lost. You might also wanna consider urgency. Was the uh, patient asked to participate at the very last minute and they may have had to have made lots of rearrangements to, to their schedule or had some pressure in responding in a timely way because things were done um, it, with, a, with a very tight deadline. These are the kinds of things that can help you to determine where in the range you need to be. So by all means, take advantage of having the, um, compensate, the FMV compensation tools on our website. You can go there and use them um, and test, test them out on your own. They are freely available and we encourage you to do so. Um, in terms of next steps, the next activities that are being undertaken as part of this project are to take the contracting templates that were uh, prepared in the EU for European use by WeCan and PFMD. They have shared those with them and made them available. And we are making them, uh, uh, we are adapting them for use in the US. Uh, those will be available later this year. Uh, we also have created a companion guide for those templates and a plain language guide for those templates that will be available when they are released. And we also have developed principles on contracting between patient advocates and pharmaceutical companies. Again, this is an adaptation of work that was done in Europe by WeCan and PFMD. Please share your feedback with us. We would love to hear from you and what you think about the FM, FMV calculator and the accompanying materials that are in the toolbox. You can reach us at nhcprograms at nhcouncil.org with any comments or questions that you may have. Thank you.